In today's episode, we're going to bring order to your art room with all things labels. Labeling is important because it promotes organization by providing a clear system for identifying and locating materials, which makes distributing and collecting supplies way easier. It also encourages students to be independent because they know exactly where to find things. It'll also be helpful for any guest teachers that you might have. Let's take a look at our best labeling ideas. Hi, I'm Paul Lees and I'm an art teacher in Maryland. Welcome to the Art of Education University's Artfully Organized, where we provide tips, tricks, and hacks to help bring order to your art room, while also addressing some of the challenges and complexities that come with art room organization. We'd love for you to like this video if you enjoy it and to hit subscribe so you don't miss a future episode. So another alternative to labels is stickers. So I actually found these fun decorative stickers that I then just hand wrote the supply or material on there. You can find these at any office supply store or online. So this is a great alternative to just plain labels. So one way that you can create more budget-friendly labels is to use address labels. So what I did here is I love to color code things and I could not find different colored labels. So I just used plain white envelope labels and I used a marker. I colored all of them in and then wrote the teacher's name on top, which just makes it easier to visually see where all of the artwork goes. If you're enjoying all of these tips, check out Pro Learning an on-demand PD for art teachers with hands-on tutorials, resources, and strategies. If you're already a pro member, we have packs with tons of organization ideas. If you're not a pro member yet, head on over to our website for more information on how you can get pro for your district. So I wanna talk about how I use table labels. So I have six tables in my classroom. Each table is a different color. In the very center of each table, I have a giant label with that table color and the word in English, y Espanol. So this is the red or rojo table. So students know that during class, whatever supplies they're using should be placed on top of that label. That way everyone at the table can easily reach and access whatever supplies we're using that day. At the end of the table, I have another label. It says folders. This is where they keep their art folders. So inside is where they have whatever artwork they're currently working on, as well as their sketchbooks and any worksheets. And at the end of art, they put these folders back on top of that folder label and then I have my art associates collect all of the folders and then I keep them in the back with their class until next time. So this is a quick way to uh, collect and distribute artwork at the end of art. I organize my room by medium. So in the front of my room, I have all of our drawing supplies. There's one bin per table. Each bin has the material that's in that bin written in English and also in Spanish. I also have a picture of that material as well and also a sticker. This sticker matches the table color that students sit at. So if a student that sits at the yellow table needs colored pencils, they come up to the front of the room, they find the colored pencil bin for their table, they use it and at the end of class they're able to put their supply bin back uh, on the actual shelves themselves, I have that same exact label, so they're able to match and put back their supply where it belongs at the end of art. You might have noticed that many of my labels and classroom resources are written in both English and in Spanish. This is because I teach at a two-way immersion school. As educators, it's important to look at your school's demographics and to consider ways to incorporate multilingual language learning into your classroom. When seeking vocabulary and terminology, you can start with an online translator. Also consider reaching out to foreign language or language specialists at your school for more accurate translations and contextual understanding. By incorporating culturally relevant and accurate language resources, teachers can promote language acquisition while creating inclusive classroom environments. Incorporating pictures in your labels has many benefits. Pictures provide a visual reference regardless of language or reading skills. This way, students can recognize and find the materials that they need. Overall, using pictures enhances comprehension and also fosters independence. For a way to use labels to help your youngest artists quickly get their names on artwork, check out Lindsay Moss in our kindergarten mini-series, 123ART in the link above. So another great way to use labels is to help students 
know where supplies go and also how things should be organized. So right here by my sink, I have this label and it has a visual of where the paint brushes should go and where paint palettes should go after they've been washed and are ready to dry. So as my students wash their paint brushes and paint palettes, they have this visual reminder as to where those things go so that it makes cleanup quick and easy. Numbering art supplies in the classroom offers many benefits by labeling supplies with numbers and then assigning corresponding numbers to students or tables, teachers can easily track and account for supplies. Additionally, numbering allows for quick and efficient distribution of materials, ensuring that each student has the supplies that they need to create their work of art. For more tips on numbering your supplies, check out the What's Your Number article linked in the description box below. Here are some examples of labels that I made using Google Docs. So I just made a table and typed in and found pictures. I then printed these labels just on cardstock paper and used clear packaging tape to attach them to the containers. Here are some alternatives to making your own labels. You can get a label maker like this one here and print those out for you. And there's also these plain address labels that you can use as well. If you do not have a laminator at your school, you can buy one of these thermal laminating machines and the pouches. There are also these self laminating labels sheets that you can also use. Let's talk about labeling student artwork. So I have all of my students make their own labels in the form of art statements. So you can see here, they write their name next to the space that says artist, then they write a title for their artwork. And then depending on the project, they have some information. So these two examples are fifth grade. They were currently researching an artist and then creating a work of art inspired by that artist. Whereas second grade, they were making paintings of their favorite place in the community. So you can see here, they had to write the place that they painted and write just a sentence why they chose to pick that place. In kindergarten, I had them write just their name and maybe just one word, but that's how I label my work and display it in the hallways. So unfortunately, I do not have a large supply closet in my art room. However, I do have these wall-to-wall -wall cabinets along the back of my room. They're arranged by materials. So I have drawing supplies, adhesives, mixed media, different papers, printmaking, everything organized already by material. And in addition, I also have them all labeled. So I really love these labels. They're actually these stick-on uh, little envelopes. They're plastic clear envelopes. So you stick them on and you can actually slide papers in and out. So if I did change whatever material was on the door, the label it would stay and then I just take out the paper and change it. I also use these slide in labels for the yarn, which I store underneath so that students know where each color belongs. And inside of these cabinets, I have even more labels for all of the supplies. So this is my mixed media closet. Inside you can see I have different labels. These were all handmade. So I took uh, those blank, my name is stickers that had these kind of decorative borders. And I use those for my label and I just wrote in Sharpie what the material is. So that's another more affordable way that you can still make your own labels as well. So I use Canva to create all of my custom labels. So I've created material labels, my table labels, all using Canva. I love Canva because I'm able to combine images and text and create these custom labels that are just exactly what I need for my own classroom. If you are interested, you can find a lot of labels online. You can also find some on Teachers Pay Teachers. You can also create your own labels on Microsoft Word or Google Docs. I've done that in the past as well. And you can actually also create a free educator account if you sign up through your school email. So that's definitely something I would check out and look into. Hey, our teachers, that wraps up our episode on labeling. If you have any creative ways to make or use labels, we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Also, make sure you're subscribed and have your notifications turned on so that you don't miss our next episode, where we'll bring order to your art room with artful organization of all your materials and tools. See you soon.